If you've looked into Utah's cottonwoods before, you've probably heard of Alta and Snowbird. But what if there's another option with that same snow-endowed microclimate? Enter Solitude. Located in Utah's Big Cottonwood Canyon, Solitude is a short drive from Salt Lake City and just one range over from the Alta Snowbird duo. The mountain has been around since the 1950s, but better known resorts have overshadowed it on the destination field for decades. However, the introduction of the Icon Pass has changed things with unlimited access catapulting Solitude onto the destination stage whether it likes it or not. The resort does a lot of things well, but does it offer the full experience you'd expect of a Rockies getaway? In this video, we'll go through Solitude's overall mountain experience and then we'll go through how it stacks up in our overall resort rankings. Before we jump in, you can check out written reviews of Solitude and over 50 other destination ski resorts on our website, peakrankings.com. Be sure to like and subscribe to help us grow, and be sure to hit the bell so you don't miss any of our video content. And you can help support us by checking out the new Peak Rankings store, which is linked in the description below. Solitude is a cottonwoods mountain. And like its neighbors, the resort gets hammered with snow each season. Generally, the snow totals are among the best in North America, although they aren't quite as stunning as at nearby Alta, Snowbird, and Brighton. Accumulation is about as light and dry as it gets, allowing for effortless turns even on powder days. Conditions on the day of this recording were well below average, yet there were still some freshies to be found. Elevation-wise, Solitude is competitive with other Rockies mountains, topping out at just over 10,000 feet. Solitude may not offer the same expansive, wide-open vistas as some other Rockies destinations, but parts of the resort offer quite striking terrain. Lower mountain areas feel pretty typical, but the upper mountain and Honeycomb Canyon areas are lined with striking canyons split by jagged mountains. If you're looking to go somewhere that doesn't feel commercial, Solitude certainly checks that box. Very little of the mountain is built up, giving it a natural, local feel. Solitude spans 1,200 acres, making it quite a bit smaller than most Utah destination resorts and more on the scale of some large East Coast mountains. The resort offers a longer vertical drop than that of neighboring Brighton, but much of its size discrepancy comes at the expense of beginner and intermediate terrain. Beginner terrain is very limited. Only a few short green trails exist on the mountain, and they're all near the main base. Blue runs can be found across more areas, but the actual difficulty of runs with this marking varies considerably. Only some lower mountain blues are consistently groomed, while the others contain steep, ungroomed spots that are more typical of black runs. Intermediates will likely find themselves lapping the high-speed apex and eagle lifts which offers some of the only large selections of intermediate groomers at the resort. The only real intermediate trees at the resort are off Apex. The other good intermediate area is Sunrise, but it's directly serviced by a slow fixed grip lift, making it undesirable to spend time there. As you might expect from the looks of its terrain, advanced and expert visitors are the ones who will find themselves right at home at Solitude. The footprint still isn't as big as most competitors, but Solitude offers a wide variety of slopes for these ability levels. Advanced visitors might actually want to start out on some of Solitude's blues. The apex and summit areas offer intermediate trails that are comparable in difficulty to blacks at other resorts. Once progressing to the real blacks, guests should be prepared for long, consistently steep pitches. Runs of this level are a mix of traditional below treeline trails and lightly gladed bowls. There are also plenty of difficult woods scattered across the resort. A few black diamond runs off the Eagle Lift receive grooming, but most remain ungroomed and require serious endurance to complete. If you're looking to get your leg day in, Solitude's blacks are a solid place. Solitude's double black runs make up about a quarter of the resort's terrain. These lines are truly gnarly and require serious technical skill to get down in one piece. Obstacles found off lift service double blacks include uncovered rocks, cliffs, and tree stumps. Some sections also involve narrow chutes. However, Solitude's most extreme terrain requires hiking to get to. 
The shorter evergreen and cathedral hikes lead to trails with tight colors and mandatory cliffs. But Solitude's marquee hike is Fantasy Ridge, which is probably one of the most taxing hikes at any ski resort, requiring a 30 to 45 minute journey up a narrow mountain spine with very little room for error. It tops out at some of the most extreme terrain anywhere, with perilous chutes oh, lined with thick rock walls that require mandatory straight lining. The hike may be tenuous, but it's well worth it, topping out at what feels like the top of the world and offering panoramic views that the lift service footprint can't reach. Unlike some Rockies mountains, most of Solitude stays reliably open throughout the season, thanks to generous accumulation and early season snowmaking. However, Solitude's hikes are the exception. These expert areas take quite a while to fill in, seeing particularly variable openings throughout the season. The Fantasy Ridge hike usually takes the longest to open. If you're looking to explore this type of terrain, try to book your trip for February or later. Solitude offers high-speed lift service across much of its footprint, enough so that typical visitors will find themselves spending most of their day on these lifts. However, a few notable areas, including the Intermediate-Centric Sunrise Pod and the Mid-Mountain Powder Horde Pod, are still serviced by slow, fixed-grip lifts and are overdue for replacements. But while Solitude's lifts are mostly modern, they could be better placed. The lift network is especially not conducive to lapping key, advanced, and expert terrain. If you decide to hit anywhere on Honeycomb Canyon, which comprises a third of the resort, you have to go all the way down to the Honeycomb Return Lift, which is near the base. This is even the case if you enter all the way from the summit. This setup means a journey of up to three lifts to get back where you started. Solitude is the only mountain in Utah that offers unlimited access on the Icon Pass, and as such, it's seen traffic increase considerably over the past couple years. Unfortunately, the lift network is not ideal for the crowds it's seen. The setup lacks redundancies, with multiple lift options only available in some base zones. Crowds in lower mountain areas are generally okay thanks to neighboring lift pods that offer access to similar intermediate and advanced terrain. But the resort's biggest choke point is the Summit Express, which provides the only lift access to upper mountain areas that comprise more than half the resort. The lift was upgraded from a double to a high-speed quad a few years ago, but it still fails to offer the capacity demanded for the area. That being said, the upgraded lift is still a major improvement from the old setup, with a lower base terminal that allows for direct access from the Apex Express lift and eliminates the need to take three lifts to reach the top. With the exception of those lapping Honeycomb Canyon, visitors should find solitude easy enough to get around. The base areas are a little tricky to figure out at first, but signage helps, although it could be a little bit more prominent. But ultimately, the resort's tall, narrow layout makes it tough to get lost. Some trails lack clear indicators at their starts, but this pretty much only occurs when the terrain difficulty is not changing from the previous trail. Solitude's roots as a local mountain rather than a destination resort manifest when you try to go in for a break. Base facilities are nice, with both indoor and outdoor seating available. The Roundhouse Lodge is also a convenient place to stop in while lapping the Moonbeam and Eagle lifts. However, Solitude's mid and upper mountain areas lack lodges entirely, including bathrooms. This means guests in these areas will have to go out of their way to stop in for a break. At least the resort is small enough that any lodge detour is never truly horrible. Solitude offers cheaper lift tickets than some nearby competitors. However, the resort frustratingly requires all guests to pay for parking. The resort is one of the only in North America that mandates paid parking every day, and more than a few driving guests will be in for an unpleasant surprise when they arrive at the resort. Solitude may be modestly sized, but the area offers direct lift access to and from the neighboring Brighton Ski Resort. Visitors can ski both mountains on the same day with a sole Bright ticket or the Icon Pass. The two areas combined are similar in size to some smaller destination mountains, and those looking to stay for multiple days may want to consider splitting their days between the two resorts. So while Solitude may come across as a family-oriented resort at a first glance, the mountain is better viewed as a low-key expert's haven. Snow quality is outstanding and the resort's terrain is quite unique, but the mountain just isn't big enough to offer a best-in-class experience. Window ticket prices undercut competing Utah destinations, 
but the resort's price advantage over Alta and Snowbird disappears when you book in advance. Ultimately, Solitude will be enjoyed by the right groups, but it's best explored as part of a broader Utah ski trip rather than a destination in its own right. Now let's go through how Solitude stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Solitude gets some of the best accumulation in North America, both in terms of quality and quantity, although it falls just short of its top tier neighbors and earns a nine for snow. Solitude is reliably open for the most part throughout the core season, save some expert hike to areas, and earns an eight for resiliency. Solitude has 1,200 skiable acres and is 1,260 acres from boundary to boundary and gets a 6 for size. Solitude offers quite a lot for experienced visitors but lacks the same variety of beginner and intermediate slopes as some competitors and gets a 7 for terrain diversity. Solitude offers truly demanding terrain across much of its footprint in some truly extreme hike to lines and earns a 9 for challenge. Many solitude lifts are high speed, but others are fixed grip, and the resort takes a hit for 23% of its terrain being hiked to, earning a 5 for lifts. Solitude's lower mountain areas have some redundancies, but there are some notable choke points and poorly set up lifts, and the resort gets a 6 for crowd flow. Facilities that do exist are high caliber, but mid and upper mountain areas lack lodges, and the resort gets a 4 in this category. Solitude has some issues when it comes to getting around, but is ultimately helped by its narrow footprint and earns a 7 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Solitude doesn't offer the same vistas as some competitors unless you hike to find them, but it boasts a striking upper mountain footprint and a local, non-commercialized feel, earning it an 8 in this category. In total, the resort earns a mountain score of 69, placing it 6th in Utah and tying it for 25th overall. You should check out Solitude if you're attracted by its excellent snow quality, stunning upper mountain footprint, and unique advanced and expert terrain, but you should skip it if you're turned off by its modest footprint, lackluster beginner and intermediate options, and less than ideal lift logistics. For more information on Solitude and more than 50 other ski resort destinations, check out peakrankings.com 